Hello class. Today we are going to be going over lesson 2.5 and we're going to be dealing with graphing proportional relationships. We're also going to be looking at graphs and deciding if they are proportional and what equations we can write using those graphs. So let's start off with our key concept for today. So the graph of a proportional relationship will always be a straight line through the origin. So what is the origin? Well, it's very simple. The origin is, a, is the point 0, 0, on a coordinate plane. Or basically, if you have a plane like this, with your x-axis right here, and your y-axis right here, that this point right at the middle is the origin, right where the x-axis meets the y-axis. And it's the point where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. And we write it using these brackets here, these parentheses, called coordinate, um, co this is coordinate notation there. So you'd write 0, comma 0. Now, a proportional relationship is a straight line through the origin. So what does that mean? Well, if we have, for example, a line that's going like this right here, then we would say that this is not a proportional relationship because it's not going through the origin. All right, but what if we do have our line going through the origin here? What if we have a line that looks something like this? We have straight and then straight up like this. Well, this is also not a proportional relationship because it isn't a straight line, right? You see how it has this kink? or this turn right here, that would make this not a proportional relationship. So for our last one here, let's just look at which one, at what a proportional relationship would look like, and then we'll go start deciding some of these here. So a straight line through the origin. So straight line right here, or we're going straight out like that. That would be a proportional relationship. Now, let's think about why that is. Remember yesterday when we were in class and we were talking about, well, it, uh, whenever our x value is 0, our y value is going to also have to be 0? This is partly why, because when we graph it, our line has to go through the origin. And it makes sense. Remember when we were looking at that equation, y is equal to kx. It is impossible for y to equal any other value besides 0 when x is equal to 0, because 0 times any number will always give you 0. All right, enough said about that. Let's get into our problems here. So we want to figure out which graph represents a proportional relationship. All right, we should be asking ourselves two questions at this time. Is it a straight line, and does it go through the origin? Let's start with this one on the left here. So we're going through the origin, right? We're right here at 0, 0, so it looks to be good. Remember, we're not a straight line right here. We have a little bend. So this right here would not be a proportional relationship. Well, how about this one here on the far right? Looks a little better, right? It's a straight line going up, and it's a little bit close to zero. But it's not going through that origin there, right? It doesn't go through zero, zero. So this is indeed not a proportional relationship. But we got this one in the middle. This bad boy right here is a proportional relationship because it checks our two boxes. It's a straight line, and that line is going right through the origin at zero, zero. Okay, so now we want to graph the equation y is equal to 2x. All right, so we got our table on the left here, so let's start by filling out our table. Well, when our x value is equal to 0, our y value is also going to be equal to 0. So I'm going to go right over to my graph here, and I'm going to put one dot right on 0, 0. All right, next, how about when x is equal to 4? When x is equal to 4, then y is equal to 2 times 4, and 2 times 4 is 8. So when x is equal to 4, y is equal to 8. So we'll come over to our, our xy plane. We'll find out where 4 is. 4 is right here. So we're at x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 8. So we should be right here. Because our x value is equal to 4 and our y value is equal to 8. So right where those two lines touch is where we're going to graph. All right, let's do one more here. Let's do 10. All right, let's not do 10. Our graph doesn't even go that high. Let's do when x is equal to 5. So when x is equal to 5, y is equal to 2 times 5, and 2 times 5 is 10. So y would be equal to 10. So x is equal to 5 right here. y is equal to 10, that point right there. Now to graph points like this, it's very simple. You're just connecting your dots. So you want to take some sort of straight edge, whether it's a ruler or a piece of paper, lay it over your graph, and then just like you're playing a game, you're going to connect those dots. And I'll connect them right there. So that would be my um, graph of the equation y is equal to 2x. Let's notice a couple things here. Is this proportional? Well, obviously, we know it's proportional. It's in the proportional form here, y is equal to kx. But if we didn't know that, we could check our graph. And what do we need to know on the graph? Well, we need to know if it goes through the origin, and we need to know if it is a straight line. 
Well, based on that point zero, zero, where x is zero and y is zero, we do know that this goes through the origin. And then looking at everything else here, that is a straight line going up. So we can indeed say that this is a proportional relationship. Okay, now we want to again decide which graph is proportional here. All right, this one on the left, it's a straight line, so we're starting off good, but it's not at the origin, is it? It would need to be right here. So this right here would not be a proportional relationship. However, this one on the right is, because we have a straight line, and that line goes through the origin, or the point zero, zero. Okay, so the graph shows us a proportional relationship between the cups of flour a baker uses and the number of cookies made. And it's asking us, what does the point zero, zero represent? Well, zero, zero is right here, right? So let's ask ourselves, what does zero mean in terms of x? Well, zero in terms of x means we have zero cups of flour. We have zero cups of flour, right? Well, what does zero in terms of y mean? That means we're going to get zero cookies. And that makes sense, right? If you're just having a recipe and it requires cups of flowers to make sugar, if you put zero cups of flowers in it, then you're going to get zero cookies back. All right, now let's look at the point 118. Well, our x terms are related to the cups of flour, so that means we have one cup of flour and 18 cookies. So for every one cup of flowers we make, it means we're also making 18 cookies. And we can take this even further, right? Now that we know our value k, we could write this as an equation, y is equal to kx, or y is equal to 18x. Now, how did we know that? Well, we're able to make these graphs based off whenever we find out our k here. And since we knew that at the point 118, where our x value is 1 and our y value is 18, we'd be able to come up with k is equal to 18. Now, let's get into that in a more basic term here. So we want to use this graph to create an equation. So basically what we need to have an equation is we need three things. We know our y is equal to kx. Now there's a couple ways we could find this. The easiest one is the one we did on that last term. We can get our, our k by just dividing a y term and an, by an x term. So for example, this term on our graph right here at 3, 2, we're going to use to find out our k value here. So to find our k value, we need to do y divided by x. So here I'll do k is equal to y over x. So here our y is equal to 2, and our x is equal to 3. So k would be equal to 2 thirds. So now let's come back to our original equation here. So let's plug in k with 2 thirds. So y would be equal to 2 thirds x, and that would indeed be true. Now we can do this a couple different ways, right? Since k is constant here, that means that any two x and y terms we find, we'll also be able to make this distinction. So let's, for example, try 6 and 4. So again, we know we can use these points because they meet on our graph right here, right? And by meet, I mean they are touching together. So k would be equal to 4 divided by 6, and we could reduce that to 2 thirds. And that'll be true with whatever point um, we choose in this graph. Now what you don't want to do is choose a point where it's not connecting. Like if I were, for example, to try to use this point right here on the graph, well, it's not connecting any x points and any y points, right? So we would be using something like 7.5 for x and y is equal to 5. But even that, we're just guessing, right? We don't even know that for sure. So it's always best to use an established point on the graph like this one right here, where you can clearly see the x and y coordinates are meeting together on the graph, or sorry, on your equation line. All right, everybody, so what did we do today? Today we used the graph of a proportional relation, sorry, today we learned that the graph of a proportional relationship is a straight line through the origin. Remember, that's the two things we're looking for, straight line and going through the origin or where the x and y coordinates meet. Next, we can, use a, we can graph using an equation, a table, and an xy coordinate plane. So we're going to need all those, right? The xy coordinate plane is what the graph is always on, but we are going to be needing either an equation or a table to come up with these values. And lastly, we found out that what a point xy means in the coordinate plane, especially in these equations here. Remember, x and y are just variables, but those variables are representing something. And if we go back to this example here, we could see that x is represented by cups of flour and y is represented by cookies. So we'll see a couple more things like this in the future where we're going to have to break down a graph, see whether or not it's proportional, and find out basically some information from it. 
Alrighty, everybody, those were our lesson 2.5 video notes. Hopefully they were all helpful and you guys got a lot of stuff down from these. I will see you all in class tomorrow. Bye-bye, students.